As a first generation doctor, there are a lot of things I didn't know before I entered medical school. What it's like, how it is to study, and how to maintain that balance of school and your life outside of school. But after three years of being in medical school, through a lot of trial and error, I think I figured out a lot of things. And in this video, I'll be discussing all the things I wish I knew before I entered medical school. Now there's this prevailing idea that medical school is extremely hard. And don't get me wrong, it is, but not for the reasons you might think. The concepts you learn in medical school aren't like astrophysics or advanced mathematics where you need a special mind to comprehend such things. Rather, it's just that you are required to learn volumes upon volumes of knowledge in such a short amount of time. To put it into perspective, the amount of knowledge that would take probably an entire college semester to complete will probably take only one lecture in medical school. And when you factor in other external factors such as mental health, the cost of education, and thinking about whether or not this career path is right for you, you will very rarely see people drop out of medical school for academic reasons. For sure, there will be people who will have to retake a year or two, but at the end of the day, once you have that MD, no one will bother asking how many times you failed to get there. So regardless of the imposter syndrome you feel at any point throughout your stay in med school, you got good grades in undergrad, you took the NMAT, and you passed the application process, you deserve to be there, and no one should tell you otherwise. With all that said, tackling the challenge of studying all the content in medical school is a solvable problem. Personally, the best way that i found to learning large amounts of information is to just space it out. Whenever I have an upcoming exam, I would always divide the amount of lectures that I have to study for it across the number of days I have leading up to the lecture. As an example, I'm currently my pediatric rotation during my clerkship year in medical school, and my goal for this rotation is to finish all 1,866 cards in the Anking Step 2 deck. And obviously, that's a very large amount of cards to do all at once. So what I did is to take the number of cards and divide it by the total number of days in the rotation, which is 56. And that comes out roughly to 34 new cards per day which is way more manageable than doing all 1,866 cards at once. And regardless of your background, anyone has a potential to excel in medical school. I remember at the start of my second year, our school had this ceremony where they announced the top 10 performers of each batch from the previous year. And much to my surprise, the number one performer in my batch from first year didn't even take a traditional pre-med back in college. Which just goes to show you don't need to have a strong science background to excel in medical school. All you need to have is the work ethic and the knowledge of how to study these topics efficiently. So here are some quick study tests for those who are just starting out. First, do not cram. Like, absolutely do not cram in medical school. There's so much to learn in medical school, and it's nigh impossible to cram that amount of information the night before an exam. Next, don't be afraid to figure it out all at once in terms of your study style, because everyone's different. I say, during the first two months, just take your time to experiment with different study techniques and see what works well for you. What may have worked for you back in college may not necessarily work for you here in medical school, so it's best to try out all the different possible techniques you can before you settle on the style that works for you. And lastly, understanding is way better than memorizing. Whereas memorizing can help you pass an exam, it won't help you stick for the long term. Knowing what is important, but knowing the hows and whys behind it, will help it stick and allow you to apply it in novel situations. Probably one of the most important things that you have to understand going to medical school is that the enjoyment of the learning process is just as important or even more important than achieving that coveted MD at the end. Since medicine as a career includes a lifetime of learning, the idea of taking tests, studying for exams, and making many, many, many mistakes along the way is something that you have to embrace. As the author Brian Sanderson says, journey before destination. I had this misconception back in undergrad that schooling was just basically a formality. Since I already knew I wanted to become a doctor, I will suffer studying now, and then I'll be happy once I achieve that coveted MD. But after three years of medical school and listening to countless number of doctors talking about their careers in medicine, I realized that if you can't enjoy the process of learning medicine, you'll never be really happy no matter what level you are within your career. There will always be another test, there will always be another practical exam, and definitely no matter how dedicated you are to becoming a doctor, there will be times where you'll just feel frustrated that you have to do something like, ugh, I have to study for another exam, ugh, I have to go on duty this Monday. I found the best way of combating these thoughts when you encounter them is to reframe them. Instead of, ugh, I have to do this, rather, rephrase it to, I get to do this. Because it makes you realize that not everyone has the privilege of studying the wonders of the human body. And overall, I think it'll make not only surviving, but thriving in med school all the more easier. One thing I find problematic about our medical education system 
is the perpetuation of competitiveness through batch rankings and all that. It seems to almost pit us against one another when in fact that medicine should be collaborative and is a collaborative profession. From the doctors who serve as the team leaders in patient care, to the nurses who provide the day-to-day -day care for the patient, to the staff who make things work behind the scenes, one can't do it all in the field of medicine. And I think that's a mindset that should start as early as medical school. In the three years I've been together with my classmates, we've helped each other in so many ways. From sharing tips and resources on studying for exams, to buying food and drinks to cheer us up when we're feeling down, or to celebrate wins, big or small. And as the saying goes, a rising tide raises all ships. And if you can contribute to building this type of culture, you will surely benefit from it as well. My advice for new medical students is to take the time to hang out with your batchmates, organize study sessions to keep each other accountable when preparing for exams, and take the time to share tips and advice with one another. One thing I definitely had to do when I entered medical school was to taper my expectations on my academic performance. Back in college, I was used to getting high 80s to 90s on my exams, and anything lower than that was considered too low for my standards. I realized that I wouldn't always be able to reach those expectations, and doing so would only be a recipe for burnout. And same goes for comparing myself to others. The reason you shouldn't be comparing yourself to others while in medical school is that not all of you are necessarily pursuing the same thing. Yes, you all want to become doctors, but the type of doctor you want to become can vary by several degrees. One person could be striving to get into a really competitive specialty and is willing to sacrifice everything else in order to achieve those high grades necessary to get into it, while another person is more focused on having decent grades but also having a life outside of medical school. And as such, you can't really compare both situations equally. At the end of the day, the only person you should be comparing yourself to is your previous self. Are you better than you were yesterday? Did you learn something new? Did you improve on your weaknesses? Those are the questions you should be asking yourself and those are the things you should be focusing on. Block out what everyone else is doing and just focus on what you're doing. And at the end of the day, when you look back and to see how far you've come, you'll just see and realize, yeah, you've come a long way. As much as our professors in medical school try to impart their knowledge onto us through lectures and trying to test us after if we retained anything, there's really no replacement for real-world experience. Ultimately, our goal as aspiring doctors is to treat patients, so there's no better teacher than the patients themselves. Now, I recognize the importance of learning theory in the classroom, but it's much easier to learn the science and synthesis of an asthma attack when you actually see the patient wheezing right in front of you. And a lot of older medical students and graduates will tell you that they've been able to answer questions in the exam because they remember the cases that they encountered while on duty at the hospital. Now, the ability to get patient interaction is quite limited because of the pandemic, but the opportunities are available through volunteering for vaccination drives or through your school organization. So I recommend you look into those so you can try to get some experience under your belt. I can't but stress this enough. Your wellness matters while you're in medical school. As much as you work hard to prepare for your exam, you should also be working hard to maintain a balance that will prevent you from burning out. Because what's the point if you work so so hard but at the end you end up burning out halfway through your medical school journey? And in maintaining your wellness, there will be two pillars that will serve as the foundation of your well-being. That's sleep and your hobbies outside of school. Now there are people who wear sleepless nights as a badge of honor symbolizing that they worked hard to study for an exam and having to sacrifice sleep because they put the grind, which is like the epitome of hustle culture. But how I view that is that they're just simply inefficient with the time they have. If you can achieve the same amount of work in less time, wouldn't that be better and still get to sleep? And studies have shown that having consistent, adequate sleep helps boost cognitive performance and thus better academic performance. Because what's the point of studying all throughout the night if you're just gonna end up forgetting most of it during the exam the following day? And on top of that, it's important to maintain a hobby that will help take your mind off of the stress of school. Don't make being in medical school a personality trait. It is but one aspect of who you are and not all you are. My recommendation is to have a hobby that will keep you physically active at least once a week because I found that exercise just helps maintain your energy more consistent so you don't feel lethargic from those hours you just be seated at your desk studying. When you're starting out something new, it's quite natural to just ask tips and advice from your upperclassmen because they've already gone through it and they probably have very good insight on what to expect. However, you should always take what they say with a grain of salt because the way someone experiences something may not be the same way that the another person experiences it. I remember when I was in first year, a lot of my upperclassmen were warning us about subjects like head and neck and renal because these subjects were notoriously hard for first years. And to a certain extent, they were right. These two subjects were very hard, but not to the extent that they were hyped me up to be. And I felt that during my time taking those subjects, 
I ended up becoming more stressed about how I perceived it was going to be hard because of what they told me rather than the actual difficulty when I was actually in it. So the lesson there is that it's important to listen to the advice of your seniors, but don't always take their advice as hard fact. Listen to what they have to say and see if it makes sense for you. And speaking of advice, if you want to learn more tips on how to study more efficiently in medical school, check out my study playlist here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.